Hello, this is Jeffrey Fox, the instructor of the Big Data Applications and Analytics course uh, here. Um, we are going through uh, the introduction to the course, which is um, consists of uh, five lessons. This whole thing is one unit. Uh, this is the fourth lesson, which is going through the actual um, units of the course, telling you a little bit about each unit. And we're on our, there are three lessons that go through the units. We just finished the first of those lessons, and now we're on the second of those lessons, doing a roughly one third of the units, presumably. Okay, so we discussed the, the last uh, units we discussed were those for physics. After physics in the, uh, on, the, on the web page becomes um, use cases. I should note that I don't always set the um, viewing in the same order as they appear on the web page, but this is this description here is the order on the web pages, and we have this use case survey which uh, was done by NIST. Uh, I, I helped uh, I and many others helped NIST do this, and uh, we collected 51 use cases, and that came from a process so called Big Data Public Working Group, which was a Pretty interesting process done by volunteers in an open fashion, uh, because NIST only does open things. It's trying to do things of general value to industry and academia. I would say most of the people involved in this were from industry, with a sizable number from academia. There were various working groups, uh, definition and taxonomies, in particular that defined what big data was, and we'll discuss that. The so-called reference architecture, which describes the uh, Set up of, compu of computing subsystems, a very uh, effective group on security and privacy, and a somewhat difficult group because it was dealing with the future, the technology roadmap. And that one had trouble because it had to do with the future when even the current situation was still being defined. Uh, the work which described after that came from this uh, subgroup requirements and use cases, which I was one of the co chairs of. Then those 51 use cases were divided into broad areas, government, commercial, defense, or national security, healthcare and life sciences, medicine, biology, deep learning and social networks, uh, so-called research ecosystem like accelerators. Uh, the astronomy and physics had lots of use cases. Environment, earth, and polar science had lots of use cases. And we should have had more, but we only had one energy use case. We go through the actual use cases, and then we go through their features. And I label the use cases by nifty characteristics. Um, and as part of those features, I discuss aspects of the features. Like I use that as an excuse to discuss the difference between SQL and so-called NoSQL, uh, traditional object relational databases, and other things like HBase or Big uh, Big Table, which are uh, Sort of got whose development got spurred by the web, and I go through uh, other classifications such as pleasingly parallel, local machine learning, geographical information system users, and so on. And that's done in these. That's this last uh, unit of the uh, use case survey um, section. So remember, we have sections, units, lessons. And um, after that uh, sort of pretty difficult, uh, or at least um, robust uh, section on uh, use cases, because it's full of detail, which is not easy to to to, uh, to cope with. We have uh, what I call the side MOOC, just to, to, to discussing this little software called PlotViz. Uh, which um, we're actually re-looking at to see if we can't do it in an easier fashion using modern web technology. And it, but this is a, a Windows technology application. It's got some motivation introduction to its use. And then we go through five examples uh, with various um, very simple things like cubes and structured data set. Then we have sort of really more complicated cases, proteomics. And how you can look up a couple of them. Um, you can look in a synchronized fashion at different, um, the same data set, 
Well, actually, you're looking at the, the you're synchronizing the rotations because in a 3D viewer you can rotate them. If you want, uh, if you say take a data set in 3D and classify it in two different ways, as you browse one way, you might want the other uh, way of classifying it to to actually rotate in the same fashion, so you can compare the classifications in more detail. Then we go to features of PlotVis and a larger data sample. And then we go to our, the final tools and examples, um, which, uh, which are given here. So this is a reasonably uh, useful piece of software. <coughs> it's not actually a key part of this course. It's just useful uh, when uh, looking at some of the results to use PlotVis, particularly for clustering. because. Clustering labels things, and if you actually can see it in three dimensions, the human eye is able to pick up things much more clearly than uh, uh, other ways of, dis of processing uh, data. All right, here we have the next units, which are a section on. So this is one section, that section has three units. And it's for the use case of e-commerce, which I sometimes call lifestyle informatics. And it actually discusses in great detail recommender systems, which are key technology. So that when you're watching uh, Netflix, it, uh, it can give recommendations for what you want to look at. Or when you're buying things online, that's a more common case probably. It can recommend to you what you think you might look at, which it does by very clever techniques which relate you to other people. And see what other people did, and so they allow you to make the best, the best use of your time. And I say this supports all these things like the so-called long tail, that um, it allows you to find difficult. Uh, I mean, not so common things because you are near somebody else who found something rather uncommon to be very valuable. And uh, we point out that all these things are optimization problems, and you could say most of the world is um, an optimization problem. And uh, after that general discussion, we go through uh, the general definition of what a recommender system is. We go through this nifty uh, system, um, website called Kaggle, which hosts all sorts of competitions, including the famous uh, Netflix competition. Uh, we give many examples of where recommender systems are used, which I say includes Netflix. Netflix has a bunch of slides about how they do what they do. And they have what they call consumer data science, which is what underlies Netflix. And uh, then we have a recap of what a net recommender system is, uh, more examples. We formulate them in the so-called vector space model, and we actually discuss uh, this. The, we actually, this is also in the motivation. We discuss how, how in these uh, problems you take uh, systems, map them into spaces. And then you look at distances, especially distances in that space. And some spaces are vector spaces and have scalar products, others don't. Then we have, uh, there are multiple um, recommender systems, so-called user-based, item-based, content-based. And uh, collaborative filtering is a particular approach to recommender systems, but a very powerful, important approach. And they're built on Kate nearest neighbor methods. And we also use this as an excuse for discussing high dimensional spaces, because these things here are in the space which is of size um, uh, equal to the number of items or equal to the number of users. And in each case, they're not enormous, whether they're a billion or a 10 million, I don't know, but uh, they're big. Now we have these so-called side MOOCs, and in this case, it's discussing these technologies. Uh, in particular, how to do K nearest neighbor algorithm in Python or Java. How to do visualization of, of the results, um, testing that algorithm. We discuss clustering, I remember that's why I told you that's why I wanted to introduce PlotVis before we did this section. Clustering is a technique which is broadly used in lots of cases and effectively classifies the world into points that are near each other. Because a cluster is a group of points that are near each other. Sometimes it's obvious what a cluster is because all the other points are far away. Other times it's just some sort of gray classification where uh, there is no um, 
Um, there's no dramatic difference. There, there's just a smooth variation, and you're just finding points near each other. Um, so we look at clustering uh, in the recommender system case, and then we discuss that in set multiple clusters more than three. We look at the uh, general aspects of clustering, including local optima, and we look at the general issue of heuristics in uh, computer science algorithms. Heuristics are very important. They're methods which are not precise methods, but they're methods that actually work. So anything that works should be looked at uh, thoughtfully. Um, the next, uh, now we move to a, a new section. That section has uh, four units, one unit on parallel computing and three units on clouds. Um, parallel computing is a very old unit, it's about um, 30 years old. It describes the basic concept of decomposition, which underlies parallel computing. Uh, when you're using parallel computing to, um, I don't know, to decide what you want to buy, uh, one approach would be to decompose everything you want to buy between different uh, cores or nodes of a parallel computer and analyze your interest on those on those items in parallel. We then point out that society has a lot of intrinsic parallel computing. And if you do a task like building some giant building, where you have lots of bricklayers or people involved, that's a very good example of parallel computing. So this is just a very, this is not the standard computer science, um, rather difficult introduction to parallel computing. This is a general intuitive introduction to parallel computing. And the uh, final <coughs> slide of this lesson is um, about cloud computing. <coughs> and we have three units on, parallel, on cloud computing. Four units in the section, the first parallel computing, and then three units on clouds. And we notice that uh, there is something called, remember we did e, informa, e, e X was the same as X informatics. Well, here instead of X, I use more or less anything. And I look at uh, more or less anything informatics, and or E more or less anything. And the electronic technology needed to support it, which is by definition for the National Science Foundation called cyber infrastructure. Then we uh, have a discussion of actually what is cloud computing. Uh, we do that from a, in a simple fashion, and then we look at a, a plethora of definitions from the web. Uh, we go through Gartner's brilliant analysis of uh, merging technologies. And uh, this is, we have most detail in 2012, but we have some information about 2013 and 2014. And Gartner not only uh, plots things on this a wonderful hype curve. They also give some thoughtful analysis of trends, which is, we go through some of that. Uh, we look at the use of cloud computing in simple cases. We go into more, much more detail about what it is, and we introduce the architecture. Network as a service, uh, infrastructure, we use software defined networks, infrastructure as a service. Platform as a service, sometimes called middleware, and software as a service, which is your basic applications. Um, you access web, Facebook, and Facebook uses software as a service to host their capabilities. Then we go into more detail about platform as a service, uh, about data stored in the cloud, and the implications of putting data in the cloud, uh, because uh, quite how you best share data is not so obvious. Partly because when you have data and computers, in order to be efficient, you want the com computing next to the data. And that runs counter to basic principles of virtualization, which tells you you don't know where anything is. And basic principles of sharing, which says that, uh, that uh, if, one, if you want to look at the data of one sort, it might be uh, in one place and data in another sort could be in a different place and they're not likely to be the same place. So as soon as you do any interdisciplinary work, you're very unlikely to get the computer and data co-located. We look at these various architectures, the key players in the industry, applications on clouds, critical remarks on security, which is important, but uh, 
Uh, still, Cloud's going to have a comment. Important comments on fault tolerance and why synchronization issues are hard in clouds. And then we just do a general discussion of big data from an application perspective. So this is the uh, last slide in this uh, lesson. This lesson is the second of three lessons which describe the course contents. And the last lesson of this unit, which is unit one of the course, will describe the, the last uh, um, parts of the course. Thank you very much. This is Jeffrey Fox signing off. And remember, you're allowed to go to sleep and have a cup of coffee because the lesson has ended. Thank you very much.